Hi, this is Vinay Kadkoli from SAP Cloud Platform Integration Suite Product Management Team. And this is part five of the video series on API management security. And in this part, we look at going about the SAML assertion flows for principal propagation as opposed to the OAuth flow that we did in the previous part. Now, let's look at how the single sign-on flow via SAML policies can be modeled in API management. So the construct remains the same as we explained in the previous video, right? So we have a Fiori application which actually connects from a destination and the destination in this case could be set for app to app SSO, which means that any existing assertion will be validated and then sent to API management in the form of a SAML assertion. And API management would then validate the incoming assertion and once the assertion has been validated, then API management would generate a new assertion as, and this is what is called as a IDP initiated SAML flow. And once the assertion is generated, it would then be sent to the OP proxy component and OP proxy component would then complete the principal propagation by sending it to the cloud connector, right? So that, that remains the wireframe of how the SAML flow works. And like I did briefly mention in my other videos as well, this part assumes that there could be trust that is set up on two fronts, okay? So either you set a trust between the API gateway and the backend, right? Which is how I explained was the premise of my colleague's blog. Or you could also set up a trust between the API gateway and the OP proxy itself, right? Which is a sub-account trust. So you could actually implement either of these methodologies that is convenient to your organization's policies. And that would then be the fulcrum of how you do the single sign-on flows. Now, let's look at other benefits that we have using the SAML flow. Okay, one is like I explained, you could use this to achieve sing single sign-on for a Fiori application. What you could also do is that use the same premise to also do single sign-on for a flow where your application, for example, right, is external to Cloud Platform. And this could be an application which maybe runs on the Microsoft stack, right? And then which authenticates to Azure, for example, okay? And then you could set up on the API gateway a mechanism where you could establish SSO or validate, for example, tokens that are issued from Azure in this case. And then you could basically then break the flow down and then essentially go via the same methodology where then SAML could be generated from API management side in the capacity of an IDP initiated SAML flow and then use that eventually to do the single sign-on. Right, so that, that is a, a benefit that you actually get when you use the SAML flows. You will not get this benefit while doing the OAuth, SAML OAuth bearer flow, because obviously that, that is tightly connected to the infrastructure or to the capabilities of the cloud platform. Here you have a slightly more loose coupling of, of the systems, okay? So with that said, let's look at how this flow can be put together. So I'm back into my API portal. And within my API portal, now I'll actually pick up a different API proxy here. So you would recall that we picked up the Northwind OAuth API proxy. So in this case, I'm actually going to pick up just Northwind API proxy. And here you see that there is a base path, right? And then from the target standpoint, it still connects into the Northwind external Northwind service. But you see there is a, a lot of handshake that actually goes on on the on the policies front okay so this is something that i will show so you see that on the proxy endpoint there are a bunch of policies which really will validate the incoming assertion SAML assertion and then there are a bunch of policies which which will then generate a brand new assertion and then send it to the target so we'll do a quick walkthrough of what exactly happens in these policies uh, in some time but i wanted to give you that flavor and by the way you don't have to handcraft this this is actually available to download as a policy template from API Business Hub, right? So we've actually built in that feature for you already. All that you'll have to do is to wire it up to your actual certificates and endpoints that I'll just explain to you in a minute. Okay, so then let's head back to our client application. So you would recall that we worked with the Odata OAuth project. So in this case, we'll actually work with the Odata SAML project. Okay, so that's what we have. And just to recall the manifest.json here, actually points to a new destination, which is called Northwind. Okay, so you would recall that it was actually activity underscore OAuth in the previous video. So now this is a new destination described as Northwind. And then if I go back to the destinations in Cloud Platform, you see that Northwind is a destination which is set for app to app SSO. 
and it just delegates the URL into the one that we described or that uh, is described by the uh, proxy endpoint on, on API management system, which in this case is the base path, right? So we, we inspected this. So that's practically all, all you need. Okay, so now let's run this flow. Let me now run and before I run, maybe it's a good idea to go and introduce the debug mode. So let's debug, start debug. And then let me run this. Let's also inspect what's happening in the developer console. So there you have it. I actually have a response from my backend now. And just to validate, if I go back to the cloud connector, switch the sub account and look at what's happening. So I see that uh, just a couple of seconds back, I had these requests uh, into the cloud connector, right? So that did work. And if you head back to the debug mode, Okay, portal, debug, and in the debug console, I see that indeed, um, I see a lot of sequencing here. So I will explain what this means, but essentially it is important to know that the request or the requests were indeed successful and the response actually comes out, right? So you see that there is a response that, that, that goes out. And what I also can inspect is that indeed the call was to the authenticated path endpoint of the OP proxies. Right, so now let's really try to understand what really went behind the scenes for this flow to happen. If I go to the policies tab, now within policies that there is a lot of orchestration that's actually happening on the proxy endpoint and on the target endpoint. So let's quickly try to grab this. And by the way, this is the same details that you will also find in my colleague Devya's blog on the exact sequencing. But let's try to keep it very short, okay? So on the pre-flow, you actually see that the first step is to really read the assertion or the token that actually comes from Plot Platform once you initiate the request. And you will remember that we had set the authentication for app to app SSO. Maybe it's a good idea to do this in parallel. So let me open another session. And let me get into the debug perspective. Okay, I still have my debug sequencing on. So let's start looking at the policies. Like I said, the first step is to actually extract the token that comes from platform and this is something that you can see um, so you actually get the uh, the encoded assertion and we have a little bit of JavaScript to then de-encrypt it so I read the SAML assertion here and once the SAML assertion is read then there is a Python script and the Python script essentially uh, base64 decodes base64 decodes the encrypted assertion and then you have the entire assertion that you can actually read in clear text. That's something that happens. And then you see that you have the entire assertion in clear text. And here is where you can actually note that the request comes prepended for the audience and the assertion actually is for the recipient, uh, which is depicted by the endpoint, right? So this is the proxy endpoint, you will remember. So this is the assertion now needs that needs to be validated. So that's exactly what happens next. So next you see that, and by the way, before we go for the validation, there is one additional step in the form of a JavaScript key info where uh, we'll have to append the values of, of the assertion that we got in clear text with the public root certificate. And this is something that we actually extract. So I'll just tell you in a minute where we extract this from. So if I head back to my cockpit, local service provider, edit, and choose custom. So you see that all the assertions from Cloud Platform will actually be, um, can be validated against the signing certificate, okay? So what I've actually done is that I've 
picked up this entire value and I've actually created a PIM file. Okay. So I go to my trust store folder that I've locally created. And if I open this, so you see that this is the exact certificate that I get from Cloud Platform. So what I've done is I've actually created uh, a PIM file in my local folder, right? This is what you see, M double I D A Z, which actually matches with with the one that we see here, right? So M double I D A Z, and it ends with B O C. So that's essentially what we have. And I've created, like I said, a file, uh, a PEM file. And what I'll do next is to actually go to my trust store, certificate configurations. You see that within the discover tab, I go to certificate configurations. And within certificate, then what I've done is I've created a new store, a new trust store. And I've given this a name. And then I give this a SAML, let's say a name. So let's just say SAML cert. And I could either create a new store or append this to an existing store. And in my case, I just created a new store. And then I browsed and uploaded the PEM file. And then once you hit create, it actually should get created, right? So I'm not going to do this again because I've already done this once. But you follow the exact same steps and then you should be able to nail this down. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. So let's go back. Policies. So that was the step where uh, in a JavaScript, I actually append the root certificate into the plain text of the assertion. This is a step that is needed, right? Because the assertion does not contain explicit this node called DSXS X509 certificate. So this is a little bit of a manual task that needs to get done. And uh, the next step would be to then set this in an assign message policy, right? So I'm just parameterizing this, nothing new. And eventually I, I call the validate SAML assertion policy. So this is an out of the box policy that is offered by API management. And what it actually then validates this against is against the certificate that we've presented in the trust store. So you would recall that we created a trust store. So this is what I'm calling the trust store. And it gets validated against the certificates in this trust store. And you could have multiple certificates as well. So that's the validation step, right? So, and you see that in my call sequence, So all my validation step actually went through fine. And this is the validation, validation went through. So this is the first sequencing or the first orchestration that, that went fine. Now, the other part of the sequencing that I need to now, uh, now achieve is on the target side. Okay, And this is when you need to generate a new SAML assertion, sign it with a private key, and then send it to the recipient. Okay, and the recipient needs to acknowledge that certificate. So that's the step that we are actually orchestrating here. So in order to do that, there is a file called SAML helper. And this file, JavaScript essentially then you know, goes about modules where it constructs all the necessary variables that needs to go into the assertion, right? So I'm getting the timestamp. So that's essentially what we do. The important thing to note over here is that there is an issuer that has been set. Okay, so this is the issuer of the assertion. And this issuer is something that I have now defined. Uh, so I'll show you where this needs to be created. And like I mentioned before, the audience URL is specific to the data center where I'm operating out of. So this is the one. And the other important step is to set the recipient. Okay, And here you see that I've actually set the recipient uh, to point to the credentials of the OP proxy application. Where do I get this from? I actually get this from by looking at what all applications are deployed in this environment, right? So there are, I go to application subscriptions, and like I'd mentioned this before in the first part as well, there is a specific subscription for OP proxy test that gets created. So you would have to grab the subscription URL. So you grab the subscription URL, and that's essentially what you've, you've keyed in here. And then there is the other part as well. So you would recall RT slash A is the authenticated endpoint. And the other part of the prefix that you see are nothing but the credentials that point to the destination that is actually created, which I will I will show you in a bit. So this is the tricky part. You need to be a little careful in creating all these manual parameters. And then you set the subject, and the subject can actually be set from the username attribute. And the username attribute is something that I would have grabbed 
in my first step okay so you would recall that when the first step when the sequencing happens and then I get the assertion from plot platform and here is where I can actually grab the the username and then actually set this as a variable right this is something that I'm actually doing in one of these policies so that is really the fulcrum of of single sign-on or principal propagation right because what you're doing is you are extracting the username and then you are setting the username back as the subject property in the newly formed assertion right so that's the the important step here the last two steps is to set the uh, key store name and the key name that will be used to sign the certificate so this is something that I've created APIM SAML store and SAML cert and this is something that you need to create now manually so to show this I've created a folder called APIM key store and what I've done is I've actually created a self-signed certificate so for just for demonstration purposes but this could be one of the certificates that you actually get from your certificate authority as well so I have a self-signed certificate and you need to go about certain procedures which is described in our documentation um, so there is a, a server key and then there is a certificate itself right and there is a metadata file with a descriptor which actually will call out uh, which is the key and which is the the key file and once you once you do that you need to bundle everything into a jar and this is the jar that needs to be uploaded into the the key store okay so that's the step which we we've done here so if i get back to configurations certificates so you see that there is a trust store called saml trust and within that the certificate name is saml cert okay so that's what we've done over here so the store name is SAML store and SAML, SAML cert. So how do you do that? You click on create and point to a new store, pick up key store and give the name, the name of the store, the name of the certificate, upload and then point it to the jar file that we had constructed. Uh, give a password if, if your key file has a password and then actually create. Okay, so this, this actually works. So I'm not gonna create this. I just did this a few minutes back. So that's another important step that needs to be factored in while generating the assertion. Go to policies. So, so that's the last step where you set the variables that will have the the pointers to the uh, to the key store and to the key certificate. Then, what what happens next is to invoke the the policy to really generate the assertion right so this is the policy and then you actually point this policy to like I said to the key store and to the other parts of the attribute uh, that are important in the assertion and then you can actually set up some additional C data as well so after that the assertion is generated and which is what you see over here as well so you see that the assertion step has successfully completed generate SAML assertion is executed and it actually has generated this assertion okay so this is the one that actually gets gets generated so just to show that this is the one so if I look for the issuer right so the issuer is set to uh, I suite API gateway this is the one and for example the recipient is set to the credentials of the OP proxy right so that that was the one that we had set so now this is the assertion that gets passed to the OP proxy application now the question is how would OP proxy ap application really accept this assertion right so what is the kind of trust do we have and like I had mentioned before that's another important step where we need to create that trust as well how do we do that so in order to do that I go back to trust configurations and within this cockpit where OP proxy is running I go to application identity provider and you see that there is a trusted identity provider I've, I've manually added okay so there are some tools that you could use to, to generate this uh, which is what my colleague has also pointed out uh, in our blog the important thing is to name or call out your issuer and then present the public certificate that will be used okay so this is what you do and the important thing is to also call out uh, this checkbox which is to specify that this is the IDP initiated uh, SAML flow okay so that's the most or these are the most important points that you need to factor in so with that trust configuration in place now the OP proxy would then be in a state where it can actually accept the signed incoming assertions which is what happens in the remaining part of the flow so here is where we again have a Python policy and the Python policy would then take the clear text of the assertion and then encode this 
and, uh, and then actually send it across as a base64 uh, as into the authorization header. Okay, so if I go back, so you see that there is actually the dispatch where you create an assigned message policy, you take the response equivalent, and then you actually set this in, in the authorization header. And the way how this is constructed is that you append SAML 2.0 and then you give a space and then you actually have the assertion okay this is the way how the dispatch the the request is then dispatched to the target system so that's in a nutshell the way how the entire orchestration between the verification and the generation step happens now the other point that i also wanted to draw your attention to is the way how the destination is actually configured so you will remember that the target endpoint here is set to an API provider called Northwind, right? So this is what, what we had set, and this is set for principal propagation. Now, what happens under the hood is that if you go back to the cockpit, if you go to the subscription tab, open up OP proxy test, and then click on destination. So this is a destination now which is specific to this application instance, okay? So you know that in Cloud Platform, destinations that you create on the application instance always will be looked up first, and then the destinations that are created on the sub-account level will be looked up. So here you see that when you create the API provider, what it really results is in behind the scenes creating a destination, and the destination here is of type on-premise, which is nothing but saying that this needs to be connected into a cloud connector, and the authentication type is set for principal propagation. Right, and the location ID you would recall is a startup plan. So this is what now uh, joins the dots back into the cloud connector. So that's how the handshake really happens. So I know that this is a little complicated. Uh, take some getting used to to really grab the entire flow. So what we've done is we've actually created a policy template within API Business Hub from where you could get the entire policy sequencing. So you don't have to handcraft this every time. So what you need to do is just look for security and there is a policy template that we've created within the SAP Cloud Platform API Management Security Best Practices template. And within this, you see that there is, um, there is a, a policy template and this exactly will show you the sequencing of steps that I was iterating over. So this is principal propagation via SAML. And here, actually, you, you get the entire sequencing. So there are two ways you could actually apply this. One is that you just do a download. okay, And then you can actually head back into your API portal and import this. So the way to really apply this policy template would be to download. And you essentially then go back to your API portal. And within API portal, you go to policy templates, and then you import right so you import this import you see that it's imported so now i click on this and essentially i get all the policies again right so this is the policy that you could apply uh, onto any api proxy that you intend to build so for example let me just show this to you real quick click on create um, let's just keep this very simple to be dummy an easy name and you deploy this and once it's deployed go to policies go to policy template click on edit policy template apply and look for principal propagation via SAML apply and there you are right so you actually get all of the policies that I was iterating over. And the important ones, for example, uh, the, the JavaScript file. And here is where we've actually created uh, comments and you would have to uh, you know, bring or onboard your actual values. So that's something that you will have to factor in. Okay, so thank you very much. See you in the next video.